everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, trying out a new color palette today. Um, what I have is the Liquitex Basics in Quinacrida Magenta. The Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in Obsidian. Amethyst. And this is the Folk Art Treasure Gold in Topaz Violet. This is a really pretty color. Um, yeah, so we're going to see how these paints react together. Sometimes I get some pretty cool reactions with these uh, Folk Art, the Treasure Gold paints. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if I sound tired, <laughs> I had an art opening yesterday and I got towed. And then it took forever to figure out where my car was and only to find out that I can't get my car until Monday. So they get to charge me for like extra days for keeping my car because they're not open. Uh, apparently they were filming some kind of Netflix special with Chris Rock. So um, I'm going to not watch Netflix <laughs> anymore because of that. Boycotting Netflix because they had me towed. Um, yeah, so that was my day yesterday. Art opening went well, though. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm very tired. It was a long night. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute. But if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need. The exact paint, brand, color, consistency, the recipe, and of course the technique. All of the things that I can't fit on a card. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for that technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in that painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. So these paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. Uh, and that mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is. This uh, is about a two on my consistency scale. It does make a mound, but it disappears pretty quickly. Um, Magenta is a semi-opaque. Generally, I use, and you can see right there, that little thing, semi-opaque. That little box, little half box, semi-opaque. So generally, I use um, an opaque for my background. But I have used the magenta before, and I did get decent results, so... We're going to try it again. And I also want to do some experiments to see, um, you know, in a straight pour, the uh, matte paints have a hydrophobic effect with the glossy paints. It pushes the glossy paints away. And so the deco art paints are the matte paints. And then um, the magenta ha has a glossier finish when it dries. So I've generally used opaques, but I'm beginning to wonder, um, as I've done some more experimenting, if it has more to do um, with the glossiness and, and less to do with the opacity, uh, that, you know, we could still get the effects just because it's glossy. And so that would open up a whole lot uh, more colors to use as a background for a straight board. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is put a bit of this background color in my pouring cup. I want to make sure that I have enough to get the reactions that I'm looking for. And then I'm going to lay down my base coat and reserve just a bit, if I can, um, to go over top of my pouring cup. 
So the reason I lay down a base coat is so that my paints slide around evenly. It helps to maintain my composition. Something has to stick to the canvas first. And if it is not your base coat, it will be your poured paint. And sometimes the coolest stuff happens on the edges. And if you don't have a base coat, you don't have the option to keep those edges because the paint is going to roll over top of itself. So I like to give myself as many options as I can. I like to troubleshoot before there's trouble. That's also why you've noticed that I cover my edges first with straight paint to make sure that I have good solid coverage on those sides so I don't have to touch it up later especially uh, if I'm using a you know custom blended color that can be extra challenging why create more work for myself I can just take the 90 seconds that it takes to cover those edges and save myself an hour of trying to blend and mix and get it right and what have you. All right, my base coat is down and now I'm going to put my paints in my cup. I'm going to start with the obsidian first. So I know that this magenta it looks very very pink this will dry darker the flow trawl does make it appear brighter however these colors that i am using i am hoping will also kind of change how that looks and this obsidian is looking kind of green next to this magenta that's interesting not what I was going for, but uh, we'll see. Always uh, be sure to check your consistency before adding it to your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. You'll see I am pouring from up high. I want these paints to sink and blend and churn in that cup. That is often what gives me the bolder cells. I do love this color. This is so pretty. Okay, and now it's going to come over top with what is left in this cup just to give these paints a chance to react. So I am going to be doing a spiral, I think. Yeah, I'm going to do a spiral. So I'm going to pour quickly, spin slowly in a clockwise matter trying my best to stay in the middle As I get towards the end of the cup, I will get closer to the canvas. This will give me a little bit more control. And 
And what happens at the very, very end is really important because that is going to be the focal point. It's going to be the very center. It's going to get stretched out. Okay, and here comes that lightest color. Whatever color I put in the cup last tends to end up at the very, very bottom of the cup, just a little bit of it, but it is just enough to give myself a nifty center that will wind up being the focal point. And that is why I like to choose a color that has a lot of contrast to go in last because that is the color that is going to come out at the very, very end, and that will give me the contrast that I'm looking for for a focal point. Trying to be very careful here. I usually just do one and a half spins, but I really liked the way that that was coming out, so. Okay. Well, so far, so good. I love the way this is looking very, very 3D right there. Going to pop the bubbles. Okay. Well, so far I don't see any of that amethyst really jumping out at me, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to once I start stretching this. However, it was not a fresh jar of amethyst. It, um, they do seem to work better when they are fresher. They've been sitting for a bit. They might not give you the same cell action. The obsidian has also been opened for a bit. Yeah, so I'm wondering, like, is this the treasure gold? Is this the treasure gold selling up on its own? Or... Is it attaching to perhaps the amethyst and that's what's causing the cells? I don't know. I mean, that really looks like it's the treasure gold doing it on its own. We'll see. Sometimes the colors can kind of attach to each other and, um, That was the difference between my videos number 15 and 16. And 16, that cadmium yellow light attached to the magenta and made those crazy boulder cells. But it doesn't always, the magenta doesn't always attach to the colors. It was just that yellow. It, seem to uh, gravitate toward. Okay, well what's going on here is pretty. I do want to just give a little bit of, a little bit of love to this center. There we go. So 
sometimes it's just the tiniest little bit. <laughs> ah, all right. So as I let this sit and these cells pop up, they grow. They have a hydrophobic effect and they are pushing the other paints away. So it's pushing the magenta away and then creating these cells that will continue to grow. Um, if I allow them to develop first and then stretch them, then I get this awesome 3D boulder effect. And uh, so that's what I do. So uh, I allow it to my paint puddle percolate and then I stretch. All right, so I think I'm ready to give this a spin. I already like what's happening here. I don't really feel like I need to let this develop more. Um, it's already it's already full of cells, so let's just give this a twirl. Remember, you do not have to spin fast. It's going to get there. I like to be able to see what's happening. I want to keep a good eye on my paint. Also, I'm in a rental and I don't want magenta paint all over my walls and then have to give up my security deposit. You know. So this magenta is having the effect that I wanted um, regarding that glowing effect. I, you know, y'all, I mean, if you watch me enough, you know that like I pick my colors very, very carefully because I want the painting to look like it's glowing. So that's what I've been going for. And I do want to cover these edges a bit more. I have a little bit of paint left here. Okay, so I have a little bit of paint um, left in my cup here. Um, I took what had settled in the in the original cups, and I'm just going to zhuzh up these edges a bit. If there's anybody who can tell me how to spell zhuzh, like I'm zhuzhing it up. Uh, we had this discussion last night, and none of us had any idea how to spell it. It sounds French, but I feel like it's Yiddish in origin. So these lines are going to get stretched out. This is going to wind up blending and looking like it's supposed to be there. But adding this little bit of paint also helps to just give it that uh, a little more juice, a little more juice on the corners.
center is just a hair off center. Let me fix that. And you can see my corners that is all spun off for the most part. Whatever is left looks like it's supposed to be there, so I could stop now. And I think mayhaps I will. Yep, okay, I'm gonna leave this be. I love what's happening here. This is so 3D. Um, I'm gonna clean up my edges. I'm gonna let this sit and do whatever it's gonna do. And then I'm gonna bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay. Here it is. That magenta is glowing uh, against those colors, which is exactly what I wanted. I kind of wanted the other colors to almost just fall into this very neutral um, stance next to it. That's, that's the fun for me, is finding the colors that play with each other in a funny way. Whatever hints of green I was seeing in that cup, I don't see now. Might have just been the overhead light has a bit of a yellow hue to it. I have turned that off, so that might have been what uh, caused that. But lots of great 3D action. It looks very metallic. Yeah. But look how that magenta just glows. Got that amethyst showed up after it was stretched. Nice ring of amethyst. Uh, and I also promised that I would show you um, the last painting dried, so let me do that. Okay, so here is how this one dried, that interference. Kind of did a little flocculating action there, but I don't really mind it so much. It's kind of letting that um, magenta poke through, but there was a little bit of breaking up action in there. But I love the way the interference looks, even with that separation. With that magenta, it was just, uh, those colors together, they just work so well. But that's how that piece dried. Actually, it's still a little bit wet in the center. But, um, yep, that's how that one turned out. So that's going to be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Please do like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff. If you are subscribed and you're not receiving notifications, please make sure you have clicked that bell and then selected uh, notify of all. Super important. Uh, only 7% of my subscribers are signed up for notifications. Do check out the Patreon. Uh, I've started a Patreon. We are doing weekly Zooms there. And, uh, you know, that's a QA, and a It's a social. We laugh. We have a, you know, we have a good time. If there are any hurdles and issues that you might be having with your painting, with your art, with motivation in general, we uh, we work through all of that there. And there is a private Facebook group. There is 
exclusive content. I walk you through a splash painting from beginning to end, even learning how to sketch it with a pencil, all of that good stuff. So check that out. Also in the description box, you will find my affiliate links, Deco Art being one of them. So if you want to get your hands on some of these paints, uh, head down to that description box, use the affiliate links and the coupon codes, and I will receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. This is just looking so good to me. It's so molten. That's that treasure gold that's uh, looking like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is super, super cool looking. Uh, anywho, <laughs> also in the description box, you will find the link to, oh, the Fluid Art Experience, where I'll be teaching in April, April 27th to the 29th. We'll be learning how to get cells without silicone. Straight pores, cloud pores, metallic boulder cells, all the good stuff. So uh, do check that out. There will be a trailer coming up immediately after this video. And last but not least, check out the Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. You all know how that goes. But that is going to be it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art. <laughs>